stepwise uh, criticisms and critics uh, with stepwise but I think it's more to do with how people interpret the results rather than the technique per se I'll get I'll talk about that in a minute uh, in a few minutes so we go into statistics defaults are estimates and model fit I always like to click the confidence intervals which are going to be provided for the unstandardized uh, beta weights and the uh, intercepts uh, R-squared change is really only something I think you would use uh, in a hierarchical multiple regression. Uh, we got descriptives, part and partial correlations, and then collinearity diagnostics. And I'm going to choose Durbin Watson too because these are data that are um, time series data. So each case uh, is a point in time and it goes monthly those, those listed investment company discount premium values are monthly values um, which uh, increases the chances of having a serial correlation or an autocorrelation uh, I'm, I'm only going to test whether it's in the data I'm not going to talk a lot about it I'm just going to look at the output and go from there the same thing with uh, collinearity diagnostics uh, and the um, and the uh, yes the collinearity diagnostics so uh, we'll go into options there's another thing that I want oh yes the plots we go into plots now what people want uh, what people typically do in multiple regression is they test the assumption of heteroscedasticity and basically uh, heteroscedasticity is present when the variance associated with the residuals of the dependent variable are not homogeneous across uh, levels of the independent variable so basically the strength of the prediction of the regression equation should be equally strong across all levels of the independent variable and one way to look at that is um, to plot the residuals z residual into the y-axis and the z predictor into the x-axis and well, it'll produce a plot, and, uh, and I'll explain what that plot looks like. Or well, I'll explain what we should be looking for in that plot. We can also look at the standardized residual plot histogram and the normal probability plot. So these are non-statistically uh, these are non-statistical approaches to examining heteroscedasticity. There are ways of actually testing heteroscedasticity from a from a statistically significant uh, perspective, which I won't talk about in this video, but I will in another one. We're going to continue and we click OK. And here's the output coming up. Okay, so the first table is the descriptives. This is just a generic mean and standard deviation uh, with the sample size. So these are the means of the discount premiums. Most are trading on average on, at a discount to their net asset values, but some are trading at a premium. And these are the standard deviations. Standard deviations are fairly similar, similar, uh, but DJW has a, a much bigger standard deviation as does AMH correlations uh, this is what the multiple regression is basically based upon uh, and what we have here are the correlations with AFI in the first column but it's a it's a it's a correlation matrix so it's a correlations amongst all the variables but most importantly uh, is the correlate well arguably most importantly is the correlations with the dependent variable and we can see that DJW has the largest positive correlation with AFI at 0.73 uh, and then next in line is ARG so my hunch is when the stepwise multiple regression analysis is performed it's going to choose DJW as the first inclusion into the model and then it's probably going to go down to ARG uh, we can also see there's uh, positive co intercorrelations amongst the uh, predictors and that's why multiple regression is a useful analysis is that it decomposes um, the unique uh, contributions of each variable as a predictor of AFI which is hard to do in your mind when there are intercorrelations amongst each amongst them if there were zero correlations between the independent variables you wouldn't uh, really get the benefit of doing a uh, multiple regression analysis because each uh, Pearson correlation would basically represent the unique predictive capacity of each uh, independent variable. We've got the statistical significance values here. I'll just point that out. And then the sample size. And then we get a table of the variables uh, removed and entered. So I was right, DJW included first, and then ARG, and then AMH, DUI, CIN, and then it stopped. So after five 
Uh, the inclusion of five independent variables, the multiple regression based on the stepwise method, uh, decided to stop because it could no, could no longer find 